going to do things a little bit differently today um, because there were we, 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 we spent a, a week at, at camp uh, and the, the theme uh, that, that they talked about was really something that is good for everybody, for all uh, followers of Christ to hear, to be reminded of, uh, to think about. And, uh, and so in just a, in just a minute, uh, I'm going to ask uh, Holly to come up and, and just sort of have a discussion with me and with you about, uh, about camp and about the themes uh, and about what she got out of it what she got out of it. So you can hear from uh, uh, from one of the, the teens that it was aimed at about it. Uh, but I want to give sort of a, a background to it. And uh, has anybody read, how many people in here have read The Hunger Games, the books, or seen the movie The Hunger Games? One, two, three, four, okay. Some people, so some people have. Um, if you haven't read the books or seen the movie, uh, basically, it's about the uh, it's about a, a place called Pan Am, which is uh, uh, modeled after sort of a post-apocalyptic United States. Uh, it's fallen apart, and there's a uh, there's a capital that's a powerful, wealthy capital, and then it's broken up into districts, and uh, the country is is uh, sends everything basically to the to the capital. And to remind them of their power, uh, each year there's what's called the Hunger Games. And each district sends a, uh, a pair of children to the Hunger Games. And they fight to the death. And there's one winner of the Hunger Games. And that particular winner is basically set up for life. And their, their district is blessed with, uh, with wealth and food and, uh, for, that, for that year. Uh, and and it's, a, it's a really well, uh, well-written series, and, and if you haven't read it, uh, it's, it's worth reading. Um, but the theme for the, the camp was taken from the Hunger Games. Uh, one of the things uh, noticed in the books, uh, and in the movie I suppose as well, uh, I, didn't pay, I didn't actually pay attention to the, whether this was evident in the movie or not, but I'm sure it was since it's Hollywood, there's no mention of God, no mention of a higher being, no mention of a deity anywhere in the books. It's that if God has been shoved out of society, God has been pushed out, and they've, they've taken all upon themselves. And, uh, and they're left with what they're, what they're left with. They're left with uh, hunger, poverty, a total uh, disapportionment of of supplies and food, and, and uh, most of the districts are uh, supplying the, the wealthy two or three with the uh, with the things they need, uh, and uh, and so the the theme was 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 off of that, and they uh, focused a lot on Matthew five verse six. Uh, if you guys look at, at Matthew five six, in fact, Holly, come, come up here, come on. So if you've uh, turned to, to five, Matthew 5, 6, uh, throughout the week this was pushed. And this was, was, this was uh, I think everybody could say it. Uh, so tell them what the verse is, Holly. Uh, the verse is, blessed are those, or, yeah, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. In some translations it says justice. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for justice. Uh, and, and, and they talk throughout the week about hungering for God, hungering for purity, hungering for right relationships with people, hungering for the truth of God. Uh, and, and what does hungering and thirsting mean? Um, let me give you this, or at least put it in front of you. What, uh, of all the, the themes that they 
they talked about. What was what was your favorite part of the the messages of the themes of the things that they did uh, that impressed you the most? Well, it would have to be the when you talk about what true hunger really means and how a lot of times we tend to snack on other things like like items like power, money, and other things, and we really we need to really now that we eat the word of God and hunger for it, we need to be hungry for it. And uh, they're not really talking about our hunger as in worldly hunger; they're talking about spiritually, and and it really made an impression because it kind of they put it into real world perspective for the younger ones, saying we need to hunger for this. Stop smacking on other things. Uh, th throughout the, the week, they, they did uh, all the various classes were focused around those things. And did you go to that study? Uh, one of the uh, one of the guys, one of the teachers, uh, brought all of the kids out to. Uh, and I don't know if you even know this because you weren't in. You weren't in there. You know that. Uh, they, he brought all the kids out to the field, out to the big softball field, and to, to get the point across of thirst, to really be thirsty. Some of you guys would have would have really, I think, liked this. Uh, they they wanted he wanted to get them get across to them that uh, what it means to be thirsty, to really want something, and so he he presented that they were trainees in the Hunger Games. Uh, they were going to train for the games and. Uh, they ran sprints in the heat, in the field, ran sprints, ran around the field multiple times, uh, did exercises in the sun multiple times. They put bags on their heads and were told to walk uh, without seeing where they were going. Uh, they, and, and, and several kids were told to just keep running and, and, until they got thirsty. And they were asked, are you thirsty? Are you thirsty? And they, they, the kids had water out there. They had big containers of water. Um, and and, and, and his, his point was that we thirst uh, for things. And we thirst sometimes for the wrong things. Many times we thirst for the wrong things. And when you've got that type of thirst uh, for God... Uh, you are blessed. And, you know, the, the, it's right in the middle. That verse, Matthew 5, 6, is right in the middle of Jesus' long sermon, in the Sermon on the Mount. And he begins with those blessings. He begins with, blessed, you are blessed uh, if you're persecuted. And you read the first 12 verses. You are blessed if you're a peacemaker. Uh, you are blessed if, uh, you know, you are mourning. And he, he, he wants people to know uh, that uh, in those, those who are down, those who are down and out, uh, are, are blessed by God. That God wants to love those who are down and out. That God is with those people, those, those people who are, who are poor, who are, who are hungering and thirsting for him so much. Even though they may not have uh, the physical bread. But they're hungering and they're thirsting for him, and that and that he's there with them, and that he's blessed with them. Um, Holly, what uh, the the activities they did? Uh, what was the most impressive thing thing that impressed you the most about them? If you haven't read the book, it's where they pick the tributes. It's where the lady reaches into the bowl and grabs his name, and the tributes that go to the prideful mermaids. Well, we'll go into a little bit of detail later, but it really opened up a lot of people's eyes to how easily faith can be shared and how easily you can save a life by you know, talking to them, you know, uh, asking them to go to church. You know, so. Um, so, to sort of give everybody here a sense of that, we're going to do a little reaping. We're going to do a we're going to.
we're going to reap all of you. Uh, and what they did at camp was you, everybody was given a button at the beginning of the week. And a button said Matthew 5, 6 with a symbol, sort of like what's on Holly's shirt. I don't know if you can see it, but it has, it's what's on the front of the bulletin as well. Similar sort of, it's the symbol for the Hunger Games, uh, for, the, for the books. It's, it's the, sort of the mocking J out of the books. But the symbol was very similar. It was the, the dove of the Holy Spirit, uh, Matthew 5, 6 on the button. And everybody got a, a button and they were told, do not lose your button no matter what happens, you know, keep your button with you at all times. No one weren't told why, but keep your button with you at all times. It's, it's important. If you, if you lose it, we have more. Come and get another button. And, uh, and then at the end of the week, they, they reaped the kids based on whether or not they had their button. Uh, and so we're going to do something kind of similar. Um, does everybody have a Bible with them? Have a Bible or uh, a phone with a Bible? It counts. Smartphone with a Bible counts. Okay. Uh, if you if you have your Bible with you, please move over to this side of the auditorium. If you do not have your Bible with you, move over to this side of the auditorium. Don't worry, you'll be able to go back. This is all a demonstration. It's just, just play, play with me a little bit. Play with me a little bit. If you don't have your Bible over here on this side. Good to get the blood flowing. Okay. At the end... Of everything, and I guess I'm, I'm over here. I, let's see, I made sure I had my physical representation because mine's in my iPhone there recording. Uh, at the end of it all, when God sits down in judgment, he's going to say, sheep over here, goats over here. And that's it. It's done. There's no other chances. You are, you are going to be reaped. And he's going to say, you got life or you got death. All the people over here, and, and I think the Bible is very appropriate to use in this crusade. If you, you've got the word, if you're hungering for it, you're here. You've got life. Life forever. Everybody over here has chosen death. Now, again, this is just a demonstration. We had to pick something, okay? Uh, but what do you do? What do you do with that? How do all the people over here, how do all the sheep over here feel? How do all the ones over here feel about the ones over here? That's not rhetorical, by the way. Sad. Guilty. Guilty or guilty or sad. Why? So what can you do? Is there something? Is there anything you can do? You carry the word to That's our mission. Okay. You can offer carry the word. You can offer to trade places. What's that? You can offer to trade places. So Holly is... Yes, yes, yes. I, yes, I agree. I, I, I just picked something that I knew people would, would, would have here in, in, in the building. And, that, and that's right. Uh, that just because you have the physical, the physical book or whatever, that you're not necessarily mean that you're actually uh, hungering, hungering after God. And there, there is a, the hunger uh, to, to actually be reading the Word and to spending time in, in prayer with God. And I think that's where you're, where you're going with, with Anne. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I understand because remember that this came from, they, they used buttons. In, in, in their demonstration, it was a, a symbol of you know are you are you really hungering for God you know are you keeping Him with you at all times are you are you trying to keep Him with you and are you telling other people 
Holly, Holly was there. Okay, see, Ronnie moved over. Holly was there, and he did. Uh, she, she knows how it went, but uh, she took Braden's place over there. And Dottie said that Ronnie went over there with uh, with, with Rita. Ronnie, Ronnie shared his, um, and and it was a really powerful. Uh, it was a really powerful physical demonstration of uh, what sacrifice looks like. Uh, if you don't know, if you haven't read, in the Hunger Games books, uh, the Katniss, the main character, she gets in the Hunger Games because her sister is the one that is reaped. Her little sister is the one that is chosen to go and fight, and Katniss steps up and volunteers, which is never done. In the books, it's never done. No one ever volunteers because you're basically volunteering to die. That's, that's sort of the thing, is that the, the odds are totally against you. You are going to die if you go into the games. And she steps up and volunteers to basically sacrifice her own life and her mind to take her sister's place. And so that was what was behind this, is, is, is sacrifice, and ultimately, sacrifice of, of Jesus stepping up uh, for our place. Um, and so, yes, uh, the, the, the demonstration of kids who just got up, and, and I'm, I'm bringing it out because... Uh, we're sort of under a little bit of a time thing more than they were. But they just let the kids sit there and went, okay, you guys are alive, you guys are dead. And then let them figure it out. What do you do? And they got up gradually, eventually, just like Polly did just now, got up and went over and brought their buttons to the other ones and helped help them come to the other side, help them get over into the side of life. Um, and, and so that, that, that sacrifice and that hungering and that thirsting for God is what is a light that shines to other people. Um, okay, you guys can, can move back if you want, or you can stay where you are. You, you can either get, stay where you are, or you can move back to your, to your seat. Thank you for, for helping with that. One of the other things that, uh, that, that was brought up uh, throughout the week, and they had what was called reflection groups, uh, where, the, where they could share uh, what was going on in their lives or share their concerns, uh, uh, share what they were learning throughout the week. One of the things that, that was brought up was uh, oppression, was the oppression, the oppression of, of, of people. Uh, and specifically, they, they looked at the, the chapter, I don't know if you want to jump up this. Uh, the chapter of uh, Exodus, first chapter of Exodus. Uh, does anybody remember what, what that says, first chapter of Exodus? Want to take a shot at that? What it talks about? Nobody remembers? It talks about how the Israelites are expanding in numbers, and Pharaoh wants to make sure that doesn't happen. And so I'm just going to read a little bit of Exodus 1 to just sort of get us what we're talking about. Uh, the, Joseph died, and the Israelites were fruitful and multiplied greatly and became exceedingly numerous, so that the land was filled with them. This is Exodus 1, uh, verses 8 and, eight and down now. A new king who did not know about Joseph came to power, and he said, look, the Israelites have become much too numerous for us. Come, we must deal shrewdly with them, or they will become even more numerous, and if war breaks out, we'll join our enemies, fight against us, and leave the country. So they put slave masters over them to oppress them with forced labor, and they built Pithom and Ramses as store cities for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread. So the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites and worked them ruthlessly. They made their lives bitter with hard labor and brick and mortar and with all kinds of work in the fields. And in all their hard labor, the Egyptians used them ruthlessly. And then it tells the story of him telling the Hebrew women, the Hebrew midwives, to kill the baby boys. Uh, he says that when you help the Hebrew women in childbirth, if it was a boy, kill him. But if it was a girl, let her live. The midwives, however, feared God and did not do what the king of Egypt had told them and let the boys live. Then the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and asked them, why have you done this? Why have you let the boys live? Of course, the midwives lie. They say, you know, well, the Hebrew women are, are vigorous. They, they, they give birth before we get there because they, they fear God. So God was kind to the midwives, and the people increased and became even more numerous. Then Pharaoh gave this order to all his people, every boy that is born you must throw into the Nile, but let every girl live. 
this theme really wound itself through in uh, in the theme of the Hunger Games and, and hungering uh, the the oppression. I'm going to let Holly. What, what when you when you read that, Holly? How do you relate that to uh, what we talked about in hungering for God and uh, oppression? You guys, uh, the, the, I, I want to ask a question, and again, this is, this is not a rhetorical, uh, but these kids in, in Hebrew, in the, in the verses we just read, they were thrown into the Nile. Uh, they, they, were, uh, they were tried to, they were gotten rid of. And we talked about sacrifice, uh, and that the kids in the Hunger Games were basically sacrificed uh, to have uh, their basic needs met. And that's what was happening, is that they had to sacrifice their children in order to stay, uh, to, in order to stay fed. Um, how do we sacrifice our children to anything other than God today? Anytime we let anything, uh, our job, our... Uh, Applications, uh, anything that we, that we put basically before God, we also put before our family and before uh, our children. And uh, we're sacrificing them for our pleasure or our desire. Yeah, what, what are some of the idols? I mean, they, the, you know, the, the Israelites then, uh, it, when, you, when you read get, uh, more in the Old Testament, you read the, how they got away from God, they end up sacrificing their kids. I mean, literally, putting their kids, burning their kids. They, 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 they turn to those pagan gods and those idols. Um, what are the idols, what are the modern idols? What are our idols today? TV, movies. Technology, TV, movies. Leisure. Leisure. <laughs> Fun things. Work. Work. Work, is, work can be an idol. How about, this is one... Sports, it can, it can sports. be... Sports? It can be a lot of things that our society says you should do. Yeah. Basically, anything that we put before our relationship with God, anything we put as a higher priority than that, than that hunger and that thirst for God is, is, is an idol, can become an idol. What about our family? And this is a tough one. I mean, what about our, our own marriage? Our own, before, before God. Um, and, and it can be. It, it, it can become uh, where uh, the family is, 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 is more important than me having an, a relationship with God and, and, and what I need to do with God. And I told them, I told them this morning, I said, you know, my, my marriage is important. My kids is important, but in the, in the priority of things, you know, God is here, and my marriage is here, and my kids are here, just immediately below God, because if we don't keep that uh, priority list, I guess you'd say, uh, in, in proper perspective, then we lose, uh, we lose everything. We're in danger of losing all of those things, family, kids, uh, it, it, because we don't have that perspective, and we end up sacrificing our kids willing to sacrifice things uh, to keep things that don't matter. Um, and so this is what, uh, this is what really, uh, you know, was the, the focus of the week. And, and I want us to, to try to think about, as we go through our week uh, here, to, to focus on uh, hungering and thirsting for God as being the top priority uh, for, for us, uh, for this, this week, that we... Uh, that we, uh, you know, try to uh, remember that uh, that God is uh, 
the most important, the most important thing that, that we have because without God, without uh, the sacrifice of Jesus, we're all lost. We're all, uh, we're all on one side. We're all the goats. And, uh, and that is the most important thing that we can remember as we go and do everything we do in our, in our week. Uh, can you guys encourage Holly? Give her, give her a hand for, for being willing to sitting up here answering questions. And that's not easy to sit up in front of people and do that. Uh, I would have had one of the net boys as well come up here, but they had to be sick. They, they just didn't want to do it. They got out of not <coughs> sick. Um, and so, so Holly was brave enough to do that. Um, we tried to get a couple of the, the guys, the other guys in class this morning to help us and actually show you guys a, a skit, a funny little, one of the skits they did at the talent show, but we couldn't, we couldn't get them to do it, uh, so we, we wanted to just kind of give you a, a taste of that as well. Um, but uh, just as, as, as we go, let's, let's try to remember to, to, to hunger and thirst for God in, in, uh, in, in everything that we do. Let, let's have a prayer. Lord God, we, uh, we put ourselves before you. We lay ourselves at your feet and we praise your name for the, the great love, the great mercy that you show us. It is without, without you spreading your arms wide and, and asking us to, uh, to just come back to you every chance we get, we're, we're lost without it. And uh, I pray, Lord, that we, we all will just uh, give ourselves wholeheartedly to you, that we, we set aside those other things that, that we say I'm, I'm, I'm hungry for, that uh, the technology, the sports, the, uh, the, the work, the, uh, that we, we, we set aside those idols that we put in front of you, and we, we, we truly... Feel the hunger and the thirst for wanting uh, to, for wanting your justice in this world and for wanting to see other people uh, join uh, join you uh, in heaven. That we strive to uh, to follow you, to follow the example that Jesus gave to us. That you bless us with the, the power of your Spirit and being able to walk those steps. Thank you, Lord, for answering these prayers and for uh, being willing to be the type of father that listens to us and stands there and, and waits to embrace us. In Jesus' name, amen.